And the last one is if one player chooses paper and the other player chooses rock, then then paper wins. Okay, so the same idea here. I'm just going to make a copy of this and hit enter here. Oops. All right. So let's start with a case where the computer chooses paper and then the user chooses rock. So if the computer chooses paper and the user chooses rock, then who wins? Then the paper wins. And so whoever chose paper, it's going, we're just going to the computer here, it's going to win. And the message is going to be paper message. And whoever, and it, it's the other way around. If the computer chose rock, And the user chose paper, right? Then the winner is whoever chose paper because paper wins in that case. You and so message is going to be paper message, All right? And then once we are done, we need to return. Well, we, we need to return the winner, right? But in Python, you can actually return multiple variables in in one function. So since we have the message also holding the message, let's return it too, so we can use it. Now you can return message, you can return variables, multiple variables by just separating them with commas. So return the winner, return the message. When you are receiving the values at the end of the functions, you sh you should have two variables in the same order to receive these values. And so you should have a var the first va variable you have outside outside. So the first variable you have. You should have first of all two vi two variables to accept the return values of this function when it's called, and the first variable you use you know to accept these uh, values is going to basically store what's store the winner which is being returned because it's being returned first, and the second variable you use to accept these variable uh, values when they're returned is going to be the mess is going to accept or, or store the message. I hope you get me. Okay, these values are returned accordingly, and you should have. Um, respective v variables okay to to store them in the same order okay Th there's only there's one problem though the, the winner is going to be set okay the winner variables are going to be set only if these conditions are true it's possible that it's, not in, it's possible none of these conditions will be true like what if someone selects rock and someone selects rock what if they both select the, the same thing actually that's what it is here that's what the last that's what the last one it says if both players make the same choice the game must be played again to determine the winner. And so, if they both make the same choice, this condition doesn't handle that. It doesn't. All right, it doesn't handle that. And so, in that case, it wouldn't know what the value of winner. It wouldn't know what the value of winner is. It's going to complain and say, hey, uh, I don't know what the value of winner is. So, when I run this, it will probably give me an error. And so, let's have an initial value for it. Let's set winner to be equal to the string no winner just string no winner and so if none of the, if if winner is not set because none of these conditions were, were true winner will stay at no winner and no winner will be returned actually a string no winner will be returned which is good because we can test to see if the string is is no winner or the winner uh, we, we can check, check to see if the winner variable contains a string no winner or the winner variable contains actual an actual winner which is either the computer or you we can do that and so if none of these conditions are, are true and if winner is not set, then return winner as it is, no winner. And message over here also wouldn't be set. When you think about it, message over here wouldn't be set, right? If none of, if, if the, none of these conditions are, tr are true, the message wouldn't be set. And so it will complain that, hey, uh, message is not set here. Uh, it, does, it needs to have a value before I return it. And so let's set an initial value for message and set it to nothing. Just let's set it to nothing, the string, em an empty string. Meaning if none of these conditions are true and message, the variable message is not set, then return it as it is, which is empty. Return it empty. That means there's no message with it, right? Which means if, for example, someone types in, if the computer chose rock and the user chose rock, then then the minnow, sorry, then sorry, then the winner will be no winner, and the message will be nothing, right? Because when it's when it's no winner, there's no message with it. Okay, and so we have determined winner. We're just going to handle that. All right, I think for the most part we are we've done it. But let's now create the program itself. Now we've created functions, 
okay to basically functions of the program so now let's just put the program together using these functions and so I'm going to define a main function and in most programming languages the main function is basically your starting point is the function that calls every other function It's the function that has your program actually and so you should make it a point to create the main function to write your program itself to have your program itself okay all right so let's define a main function we're going to end up calling the main function also but the main function has our program it calls everything it calls all the other functions and so let's just make the point to have a main function in your program that runs your program all right the first thing we want to do we now now we have the function so let's now run through the program again the question again write a program that lets the user play the game of rock paper scissors okay the program should work as follows when the program begins a random number in the range of one through three is generated okay so we have a function that's going to generate a random number for us so let's call it let's call it so we just say generate random number we can call actually make a copy of it just so it's easy so generate random number here generate random number I have my two parentheses let's shift this down a little bit so it's, not, so it's not confusing so generate random number right it's going to basically generate a random number we can we can tell over in the function that it returns a random number and so when it returns it we need a place to store it so I'm going to create a random number variable over here and whatever is being returned from the generate random number function is going to be stored in random number it doesn't matter that the random number is the same as the, these names it doesn't matter like I said the variables in each function is the, its scope is within that function random number here is different from random number because they are in two different functions they don't see each other right they're like twins but you know they, they, they're like twins they're not the same thing um, they look like right <laughs> they, they look the same but then they're not the same they're like twins because they are in two different functions and because this random number is also in the main functions that it's different from any other random number variable so it doesn't matter the name the names are the same all right so we generate one the random number the question of the say is now um, a random number in the range of one through three right if the number is one then the computer has chosen rock all right and so we can determine okay the computer's choice uh, we can get the computer's choice based on a random number that was generated and to, and we have we have it here generate random number so let's make a copy of that and then paste it as a next option so we generate a random number as a function but it needs okay generate random number needs Oh, actu um, actually, sorry, it's actually, it's not generate random numbers. Is that what we did? Oops, sorry. I meant to get the computer's choice based on the random number. Okay, so this is what I meant to copy. We are getting the computer's choice here. Okay, based on the random number. Now, the computer's choice, as we defined it, needs the random number to determine the choice and return the choice, return the computer's choice. And so we have the random number here and so we can pass it in as an argument so based on this random number tell us the computer's choice and once it returns the computer's choice over here uh, return computer choice over here in this line right we need once it returns it we need a place to store it so I'm going to create a variable called computer choice and this is going to store the computer's choice once it's returned doesn't matter if that computer choice is the same as these variables it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter um, as long as they are in different functions they're considered different okay all right okay so now we're done with that if the computer if the number is two then the computer has chosen paper all right so now we have the computer's choice and now it says the user the user enters his or her choice of rock paper scissors or you know okay um, rock, rock, paper, or scissors at the keyboard. All right, so we have a function that's going to get the get the user's choice, which is here, all right? And so let's call it in main. It's a function. It doesn't accept in any argument to get user choice. It returns the user, user's choice though. And so let's create a variable in main to get the user's choice. Okay, so it's returns the user's choice. So we need a place to store it. So I'm storing the user's choice in user, in user choice. Again, it doesn't matter if this name is the same as the same the same variables I use here it doesn't matter then they are considered different because then they're in different functions all right so once we have the user's choice what's next now it says the computer's choice is displayed and so we have the computer's choice here and so we can display it with a print statement and say that the computer shows right I'm passing it in there as argument 
I'm passing the, the um, arg you know, values argument in, in the print function. And when you pass arguments in the print function this way, they are separated with a space when they are displayed. And so this is going to be displayed as the computer choice. Actually, th it doesn't add on in the space because by default, the arguments are separated with a space when they are displayed. And so this is going to be the computer choice space. Actually, the computer choice or the computer, actually, the computer chose. I, I thought it was choice. The computer chose space the computer choice okay so that's what it's going to do all right and then so, so it says the computer choice is displayed which we've just done and it says a winner is selected according to the following rules okay and so that's where we created a de determine winner function which takes in the computer's choice and the user's choice so let's do that determine winner takes in the computer's choice which we have here so I'm passing it in here and the user choice which we have here right and it returns the winner and then the message right and so we need to have variables to also store them first of all I need to have a variable to store the winner and I need to have a variable to store the message so remember I said over here when I was when it's returning the winner and the message I need to have variables to store them in the same order because it's returning winner first, I need to have a variable to store winner first. And because it's uh, returning winner, sorry, message second, I need to have a message variable to also to, to store the, the message. It doesn't, these names can be different, but I'm using the same name because that's really what it is, right? It doesn't matter that the same name, like I said, because they're in different functions. And so, and so they are all considered different variables because they're in different functions. All right, so now I'll have the winner stored here. I'll have the message, message stored here. And so let's see what it says. All right, so that's that's what all we have with the question. All right, so once we have the winner, um, it's possible, right? The winner can be a real winner, which is either the computer or you. Or at the same time, it's possible the winner can be no winner, right? Now the question said over here that if both players make the same choice, which means if there's no winner, right, then the game must be played again to determine the winner. Let's deal with a case where there's actually a winner. Okay, let's deal with a case where this, the content of this variable here, here is not, is not, it's not the string. Okay, it's not the string. No winner. It's not the string here. It's not the string. Let's make sure that you know that this, what's what, whatever is returned here, returned into this winner variable, is not the string. No winner. So in that case, so if it's not the string, no winner, right? Then that means that we have an actual winner. We have either the computer or the string u. And so let's have an if statement to check that and say if winner, okay, if winner is not equal to, right, I'm using not as exclamation sign and equal, which means not equal to. If the winner is not equal to the string no winner, right, exactly as it is. If it's not equal to the string no winner, Then that means there's a winner, right? And so let's display a message, right? And let's say that winner is the winner, right? So let's 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 first pass in winner. And let's have a string and say winner one, right? And let's have a parentheses. And then let's display the message in the parentheses, in the opening parentheses, because we'll have messages stored here. Then now let's close our parentheses here all right and so I'm passing in this as arguments in the print function and remember when you pass in arguments into the print function this way they are displayed with a space separate separate in them and so we have it's going to be displayed as the winner which which is either computer or you all right so let's assume it's computer it's going to say computer like space actually I don't need this because by default it's going to separate them with space so winner space one parentheses space message Right, space, uh, closing parentheses. That's how it's going to be displayed. So if the winner is not, okay, the string no winner, right? If it's not no winner, right, then there is a winner. And so prints the winner with a nice message, All right? All right. And the question also said that if both players make the same choice, the game must be played again to determine the winner. And so there's a, there's a case where this variable winner here, right, is... Or will be the string no winner. There's a there's a, it can happen. That's when both 
that's when the choices okay that's when the choices are the same in that case the winner will be uh, uh, there's the, the value that's going to return for winner here is going to be the string no winner this is the case where the winner is not equal to where the string is stored in winner is not equal to no winner and if it's not equal to no winner that means there's a winner and so display the message from the, from the nice message for the winner and so it's possible that the winner variable can have the string no winner and so while all right because the, the question said if both players make the same choice, the game must be played again to determine the winner. So if if the user keep if the computer and the user keep on selecting the same thing, then the game should continue playing again until they find a winner. And so let's use a loop to handle that. Oops. Now let's say while winner, okay, is equal to now I'm, I'm using double equal to again to compare. I don't think I mentioned it. Yeah, actually I mentioned it here. Double equal to here. So while double equal, I mean while winner is equal to okay, it's double equal to. The string exactly no winner, okay exactly you know, no winner. Then okay while winner is, is equal to no winner, okay then what we want to do is we want to basically start start the game again, right? We want to think about it. if the game is if the winner is no winner then we want to start the game again, right? So we can actually repeat all of this, right? But we are going to repeat ourselves too much. So let's create a function. Okay, let's call it start again. Start again. It's basically going to start the game again. It's going to generate a random number. It's going to get the computer's choice, get the user's choice, right? It's going to display the computer's message. It's going to determine the winner based on the value of or, or the content stored in the winner, right? If the winner, if the what's stored in the winner is equal to no winner, that means that, okay, if the string is no winner, Sorry, if the string is not equal to no winner, I'm sorry. Okay, if what's stored in winner is not equal to no winner, then that means there's a winner. And so display the nice message for the winner, right? That's what we want to do. So that's what starts a start again is going to do. That's all it's doing. So I'm going to make a copy of it and paste it in start again. Okay. That's what we're going to do. And so while the winner is equal to no winner, if there's no winner, we want to start again. So we can basically call the function start again because now we've defined it to basically start the game again or do it, do exactly the same thing as we're doing. And so we can call it start again. The only thing is while winner is equal to no winner, once it start again and this is done, right, it's going, winner is always going to stay the same thing. Nothing changes the variable winner. Winner, if the winner stays at no winner, for the, the very first time winner is no winner. It's going to start again, but winner will still stay at no winner. So this is going to be an infinite loop. Because winner will always be no winner. There's nothing to change no win winner. But if we start again, right, we determine a winner. We, okay, we determine a winner here. And so once we determine a winner, a new va va a value for winner is generated. And so we need to basically run this while loop based on the new winner. And so once we have once we start again, let's return the, the new winner that has been generated. Once we start again, generate a random number, play the game again. Let's determine. Let's let's we, we we always get a new winner, right? And so let's return the winner. And so this method call start again is always going to return the the winner once again was started again. And so I'm going to create a variable called winner, and, and basically receive that value. Once it was started again, was started again. I'm return. I'm receiving the winner here. Okay. And so winner now becomes a new value and it checks is winner equal to no winner. If it's equal to no winner, then play the game again, start again, right? And get a get a new winner. Okay. Oh, I haven't indented it well. Um, so let's see. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. Oh, let's indent it properly. One, two, three, four. Okay. I think it's good now.